Hi, welcome to Ivy's Kosher Kitchen. It's me, Avi, your wineless wine drinker. Uh, well, I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. Uh, we are making a fantastic recipe today, asobuco. Now, asobuco is a wonderful dish from Italy, from the Milan region of Italy. It traditionally can use uh, veal shanks or uh, beef shanks. It uses the, that kind of um, muscular uh, part of the leg that oftentimes can be tough, but I gotta tell you, cooked right and cooked well, this can be one of the most delicious and savory dishes you will ever eat. Now, I have got here some wonderful beef shanks, of course, courtesy of our friends over at Cole Foods, and you know, no antibiotics, no growth hormones. These guys have been out 100% pastured and 100% grass-fed, never touched a drop of grain, a grain of grain <laughs> in their life. Anyway, uh, we're going to get going right away. I'm going to do the wine in a minute because I've got three wonderful wines here, two reds and a white. We're having beef. What do you think we're going to use? You may not be right though, okay? We're going to do a little bit of seasoning uh, salt. This is a very simple seasoning. We're going to do it to both sides. Salt. I like to add a little bit of granulated garlic, just a, a hint of it, okay? And a little bit of cracked black pepper, okay? Very simple seasoning, but we're going to add one more. Now, asobuco has evolved over the years. Uh, originally, the original asobuco also had a touch of cinnamon. And I want to go back to that because I happen to love cinnamon on meat. Not a lot. We're just going to do a little bit. So a little bit from up high, just a little bit of the cinnamon on here. It's just to, to give it something different, a little unexpected something in there, okay? And of course, both sides get a little bit of that cinnamon treatment um, on there. Now I'm going to just pour the spice in my hands and because I don't want to, I've got a little bit of that beef on my hands. I don't want to touch the actual spices itself. There we go. Now, here's my, uh, my beef all seasoned, but we are not done with it yet. I've got here a pan. We're going to kick this into a, a nice heat, about a, a medium heat. Okay, I'm gonna get, let, let that get going. What I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this to the side so you can see a little bit better, okay? What uh, I'm gonna do now, that, that pan is going, I have got flour. Now, in a traditional asobuco, a lot of recipes will tell you, dredge the meat in the flour. Well, look how much flour I have in here, okay? I don't wanna do that, you know why? Because I don't need this much flour for this, these two shanks. And what I'm gonna do, once I put the meat in there, you know, the flour is gone. I'm gonna waste a lot of it. So I'm gonna actually do the opposite. I'm gonna sprinkle the flour onto the meat, okay? And we're gonna just get it on there really nice. Now the flour is gonna give us a nice browning on the meat, okay? I'm gonna pull that, turn that over. And by the way, when you do the pepper here, you don't wanna go so heavy on the pepper that, um, uh, you know, it gets crazy because the pepper really can burn at a high temperature and you wanna be careful of that, okay? So look at all that flour I saved that we're gonna put aside. I've got flour here in the dish and we're just gonna now just make sure I've got flour all over these. So that's good, that's ready to go. I've got some uh, nice olive oil here. We're gonna take this, put it right into the pan, okay? And we want to get this pan, you could see already, wow, starting to smoke. That's how quick we are in that pan. Roll it around. And now we're going to brown these in here. It's going to take about two or three minutes per side. Get them browned. And when they're brown, I'm going to show you our next step. Okay, I've got both sides of this beautiful uh, beef shanks browned, okay, almost to the point of burning, okay, that's fine, okay, because this is really, we're going to braise this. So this is not the cook, this is the seal, this is the browning, this is giving a really good flavor structure. This is going to be the base of the flavor that you're going to build on as this dish goes along, okay? So I've taken that out of the pan. I like to do one pan meals when I can because, you know, it's easier. So I'll put that to the side. I've got my pan back here, put a little bit more olive oil in it, okay? Now, what I've done 
is I rinse the pan out because sometimes some of that flour that was on the uh, asobuco, on the, uh, the beef, it falls off. And if you leave it in there too long, that flour is gonna burn. We don't want that to burn because that's not gonna be a good taste. So we just did a quick little rinse, no soap, nothing like that, just a little bit of water, rinse it out okay, and there we go. So we've got um, a little bit of olive oil going in there. Now, I've got an onion, a nice diced. It is not a fine diced. This is gonna cook for about two, two and a half hours maybe in the oven. So you don't need to get these uh, vegetables so super small, but I don't like them too big and chunky either, okay? So we're gonna put in there our onion. And so let that start to sweat, okay? In with the onion, I have carrots. This is a, a very classic uh, Italian or French sofrito, okay? We're going with uh, onions, carrots, and celery, okay? Again, in. Now the, the onions and the carrots have a lot of nice sugar. So it's really gonna, those sugars are gonna develop and really give a sweetness to the dish. You know, it's not a heavily seasoned dish, like I said before. And then of course the celery's got a lot of water in it, so that's gonna release out and just keep things going for a little while. So this has just gotta go for about three to four minutes, maybe five minutes, depending on how your heat is here, and just get a little bit of soft and translucent. Well, while this is going and, and doing its thing, I'm gonna show you something a little bit there. I'm gonna put this to the side. And remember I told you I have three wines. I didn't get to say Lachaim yet. <laughs> I'm going through, uh, you know, uh, uh, Avi, it's not Avi's kosher kitchen unless I can say Lachaim to everybody, right? So I told you I have three wines. I have a beautiful uh, acacia from the Chosen Barrel, okay? These are, by the way, all courtesy of our friends over at kosherwine.com. They carry all these. These are some private label brands that they're carrying that are really, um, if I told you the actual vineyard this is from, you'd be going, Wow, at that price point, I'm getting that wine. Uh, something must not be right, but it is right. And I'm telling you, this is great. I had this a uh, few Shabbats ago, this Chosen Barrel, wonderful. This is a French wine, the Baron Bastis uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, nice red wine. And I have a white wine from the Jezreel Valley. It's the Jezreel Vinery. This is the uh, uh, Levanin. Uh, every time I see it, I keep thinking it says Levana. Go figure, Levana. At any rate, it says Levan, uh, Levanim, okay? This is the, uh, their brand of 2014, and this is the one I'm going to open because, believe it or not, we're going to be cooking the beef with white wine. Now, you may be saying, Avi, this doesn't make sense. You know, usually beef, that's red wine. That's a red wine uh, situation. And usually, I would say, you're right. It is a red wine situation. But in this case, we're going with white because we don't want to over enrich this dish. When you see what else we add to it, you're gonna go, I get it. It just balances. You know, cooking and dishes and flavors are all about balance. You want it to be balanced and not overwhelmed with one side or the other, okay? So we're gonna open it and boom. There we go. Beautiful opened bottle of wine. And uh, I'm going to pour a glass. Now ordinarily we would let this decant a little bit and maybe have a little bit of uh, breathing room, but uh, we're cooking, so I gotta get going. So, l'chaim to all you guys. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu menach olam borei pri ha-gefen. It's very nice. And this is gonna be perfect because I've got my sofrito going here, and you can see it's starting to heat up there. I'm going to just lower the heat on it a little bit. Okay, starting to sweat out. Now don't worry if this isn't all the way um, cooked down because it's going to have plenty of time. I'm going to add to this um, a little bit of garlic. Now I've got some nice garlic cloves. I want to add the garlic afterwards because the garlic, if it's added too soon, can have a tendency to burn. So I'm going to take about four, ah, make it six cloves of garlic here, okay? We're gonna give it just a very uh, light, large chop on it, okay? Nothing big, just enough so that you don't have too big a chunks. Okay, that's gonna go in at about this stage. Just get all that garlic in. I missed a piece. Never leave a piece of garlic out, by the way. 
All right, let that get going now. Traditional recipes will call for, uh, as they say in Britain, a knob of butter. You can put a knob of butter in there and a knob of butter. You know, give it a nutty butter taste. But we're not doing that because we're a kosher kitchen and we don't put butter and meat together, so we're gonna leave it there. But I am gonna put this in. This is a little bit of cognac. Also courtesy, uh, by the way, <coughs> of our friends over at kosherwine.com. Fortunately, I don't have the bottle to show you because uh, oh, we had some friends over the other night and one thing led to another and this is what we have left. But it's just enough to put in here. Now you wanna put this cognac in and it's just gonna flavor those vegetables. Okay, that, oh, you could smell it. Now the alcohol should cook out of there, so most of the alcohol will cook out. If you feel like you need to flambe it or something like that, you know, you can. Uh, by the way, if you're somebody that does not cook with alcohol or wine, that's cool. You don't have to add this step in. We are gonna add the uh, white wine. And again, if you're somebody that is not cooking with wine, what I would suggest instead of the wine is just a, a slight mixture of a, a little bit of a uh, apple cider vinegar and uh, a little bit of grape juice, just to balance it out, just to give it a little bit of the acidity, not a lot of vinegar, so a little bit of the acidity, okay? We're gonna add about a, a cup of this. Uh, maybe a cup and a half. Okay, we're, we're building up a sauce now, okay? Now I've got some tomato paste. Okay, I'm gonna put about <laughs> three, four ounces. Be careful you don't splatter it all over the place like me. About three or four ounces of tomato paste. And I've got two tomatoes diced. That goes in, okay? Now, you'll notice I had everything prepared and laid out here, which is what you want to do when you are uh, cooking. It's called your, uh, in French, the some plat. You know, everything just laid out, ready to go. Um, very easy to, uh, to assemble. Now you're gonna see we're gonna build up a very rich sauce as this cooks, okay? I probably have more vegetables in here than I need to. Um, but that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's fine because those are gonna go to a secondary use at another time I'll tell you about at the end of the video. Okay, to this I'm gonna add about, um, well, there goes one, I'm gonna add three bay leaves, just right in here, okay? And this is really it. I'm gonna, actually I put a little bit more wine, I want a little bit more liquid into here, okay? Uh, you can, in fact, let's throw a little, Throw a little water in here too, okay? Just to build up a sauce, that's good. Okay, now this is gonna just cook down. The easy thing, the thing we're gonna do now, because remember I told you we're braising the meat, we're going to take our meat, this goes back in, right back in here, okay? We're gonna take a spoon, just, Put some veggies right on top. We want that flavor of the veggies to get in there, flavor of the uh, bay leaves, everything to just kind of meld together. And that wine cooking in. Remember that wine too, because it's got that acidity, it's gonna kinda, uh, you know, leeches, I hate that word leech, but it's gonna get a little bit more flavor out of it. The one thing else that we're gonna add to here, it's a little bone broth, actually two more things. Um, this is some beef bone broth that I made. Um, took the uh, beef bones from Whole Foods. In fact, you don't even need to add the water that I added if you wanna just add a little bit more of this, okay? Remember, some of this is gonna evaporate. I took some beautiful beef bones, you know, with the marrow from Whole Foods, and I just simmered them with a, little, with a little bit of salt, put a touch of vinegar in there to just grab some of that flavor out if you want to. Vinegar. Not a, not a necessary step, but it's a good step. That beef broth is really gonna help to flavor and season this meat. Now, one other thing, and this is a non-traditional step here. I've got, this turned up the heat. I've got from Cold Foods there, uh, smoked, uh, uncured beef strips. Um, you know, this kind of rhymes with making I'm gonna take four of these, okay? These are really good, they're smoked, so they've got, actually we'll do five. They're smoked, so they've got a, a great smoky flavor, okay? And what I'm gonna do is just take them and just, again, kind of rough cut on these, 
just to cut them into pieces. And this is gonna go in. This is gonna give a little bit of a non-traditional smoky flavor to uh, our asabuco, okay? And I'm telling you, if you could smell how things are going here, you'd be going, well, I, I can't wait for this to come out. I'm gonna just put this in here like this. Let me move this over so you can see. See, we're gonna, we're gonna put more of this in here. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little hog wild and uh, put two more strips right on top like that and just uh, get that uh, going. There's my towel, wipe my hands. This good. We wanna just get this so it's really, the whole thing is boiling hot. Now I've got an oven heated to 350 degrees. It's gonna go into that oven for about an hour and a half to two and a half hours, uh, depending on how well you want this done. What we're really looking for is for this meat to be falling off the bone, okay? Falling off the bone. It's gonna be just like butter, okay? Well, margarine, par of margarine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, any rate, that's it. Very simple, cover this, turn this off. I've got my sauces boiling, I put this in the oven. So I'll be back in about two hours or so, uh, be instantaneous for you. We're gonna see how this comes out. A wonderful asobuco, the time. Well, alrighty, about two, two and a half hours or so, and I am here and uh, towels in hand. This is out of the oven. There we are. This is asobuco. Take a look at this. I'm gonna tell you, one of the best things about this right now is just smelling it. The, the aromas that are coming off of here are fantastic, but we're not done, so hang in there. Let's, here's what we're gonna do. I've got my plate. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take my meat out. Okay, now the meat is falling apart. It's just falling apart right off the bone. We're gonna just put it here. If I look at this, the bones are coming out. The, the marrow bones are just, wow. This is gonna be just awesome. Taking that out, okay, now, I'm taking that out because I've got all of this sauce. Now these, these vegetables, because we cut them uh, nice and big and hearty, they really have held up well in here, okay? But uh, we're gonna go to ne the next step, okay? Which is I'm gonna put the meat aside right here. We're gonna take, light our burner. We're gonna to try to reduce this sauce down a little bit, okay? And what we're gonna do is I've got also here some fresh herbs. Got a little bit of fresh uh, basil in here. And we're gonna put a little bit of some fresh thyme, okay? Just pull the leaves right off the stalk. That's it. Okay, now the reason I didn't add these before is because sometimes when uh, when uh, you have fresh herbs and you add them to uh, something that's gonna cook for a long time, it's gonna braise an oven for so long, the herbs themselves can start to get a little bit bitter. I want that freshness of the herbs. I want that fresh taste coming out of them. So we're just gonna add that. I'm gonna have one more. Well, <laughs> I didn't mean for that to happen, but there we go, a little bit extra of our thyme just uh, made its way in by itself here. Okay, we're gonna let that kind of, oh, one more piece of meat here we, we, we didn't, didn't get, put that over there. I'm gonna let that sauce just reduce a little bit on the side, but now, here's what we're gonna do. In an asabuco, the traditional way to serve this is over a nice bed of yellow risotto rice, okay, which I have and I've already made. It's very simple to make a risotto rice. You just have to use the right rice. Okay, because if you use the wrong rice, it's not really a risotto. You gotta use the correct rice, and the correct rice is an arboreal rice. It's a short grain rice, and I'll show you all about that in a minute when we get to the rice part. Meanwhile, while this reduces, the other thing that's very traditional on an asobuco to serve it with is a gremolata. A gremolata is basically a very simple blend of uh, parsley, a little garlic, a little lemon zest, just a hint of olive oil, okay? So we're gonna make our, uh, Gamalata, now I've got some nice parsley here. We'll just take the leaves. We don't really don't care about the stems so much. This is a garnish, very traditional to just uh, put right on top of the asabuco. And this is, uh, you may have noticed, I've got my 
got my wine here, right? And I've got another glass here because asubuco is really a very romantic dish. You know, it's the kind of uh, dish that you want to serve um, because it sounds so fancy and it's nice and it's really pretty simple to make, but it's, it's just one of those dishes that when you serve it, um, you want to eat it with somebody else. You want to have that, uh, in this case tonight, I'll be serving this to my wife and I, and uh, the kids will be going to bed early. So uh, I want to make sure this comes out really nice. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this right here on the, uh, on the cutting board, okay? Just going to take our, uh, our parsley, just kind of roll that up together and just give this a nice chop. You're not looking for a very fine chop. Uh, remember, this is kind of a, a rustic dish. Just put that in there like so. That's all we have to do right on top of that. A couple of cloves of garlic, right? And we'll just... And I know you're saying, you said this is a romantic dish and you're eating garlic. But remember, if you're both eating garlic, it's okay. So we're going to just get that garlic going right in here. Right in. I'll put one more clove because garlic is my friend. So we just do a little bit of that. All comes together. And now we're going to take lemon. We're going to use a little lemon zest. So we just take our, our zester and right over this. Okay, we want to just get all of the, make sure you watch your lemon first, by the way. Um, we want to get a little bit of lemon zest. Don't go down too far into the white because then it gets a little bit better, bitter. Um, a little bit more because I think lemon and Italian flavors, it's nice. It's a fresh, fresh type of uh, flavor. There we go. That and we just bring it all together here with a little bit of olive oil. Had that off to the wrong side and that goes just right on top. Just, uh, there we go, that's good. Okay, and we're gonna just put that all together like so. Okay, we'll give it, see a couple of bigger pieces of garlic, we'll just put it like that. And right into our little serving dish. That's all very nice, that could go there, okay. Here we go, our sauce now has been reducing. You can see that it's, oh, I could smell now those the herbs in there and all like that. Okay, we're just gonna take this, just like so. Okay, turn that off, put that to the side. Now, I mentioned I had the risotto. Got this nice risotto here. It's just uh, basically I said uh, the arborio rice, very short grain. You want to use that because the starch structure in this rice is a little bit starchier, which helps it to stick together. Now in a traditional uh, risotto, what they'll do is they'll add some butter, maybe a hint of milk, and a little Parmesan cheese. But Kosher Kitchen, again, we're serving this with meat, so there will be no cheese in this because in a Kosher Kitchen, if you didn't know, we do not combine dairy and meat products together within the same meal. Um, so I've just not put in the cheese. I've left it out. And you know what? It's really good. Now this cooks in a little bit of a chicken stock and traditionally uh, we put some saffron in it and that's saffron. You don't need a lot. It's a spice that goes a long way with just a little bit and the aromatics on that are amazing, amazing. Okay, so we're gonna just take a little bit of this risotto right here. You might be able to see a couple of saffron threads in there. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of our sauce. I'm not worried so much about the vegetables, just a little bit of sauce right on the bottom, okay? Now we're gonna take here, take our meat. Got to have the marrow bone. That's uh, sort of the, uh, the main attraction, isn't it? Okay, we'll put our asabuco meat right like so. Okay, put that aside. Now, one of the other things I like to do here is take uh, 
Where'd I go? Take my slotted spoon. So I don't want to get too much sauce on top there, but I take a little bit, just a little bit of the, the vegetables, just a, a hint. You know, really, like I said, these are just now kind of for show. The flavor has been sucked out of them, right into the sauce and right into the sasapuco. We do that. We're going to take our gramolata, uh, yeah, gramolata right on top like this, like so. And I just like to take a nice, uh, I'll just take a nice uh, bit of thyme and put it right in there like so. And there we have it. Very traditional Italian asabuco uh, with a beautiful meat here, uh, the uh, beef shanks from our friends over at Cole Foods. You know, this is kind of like that, I, I can't use the word, they won't let me, but you know that, uh, that meat that's massaged, that uh, I don't want to say that it's uh, cold, you know, the Wagyu, you get the idea that really nice soft, it really has that great quality and texture. Grass fed 100%, no grain, uh, you know, just beautiful, no antibiotics, no growth hormones, nothing. Very, very healthy meat. Of course, one of the key ingredients in this is cooking it with the wine and you want to use the white wine and the right wine. Okay, so this is a, a white wine dish and I, once again, I use the uh, Jezreel uh, Levanim wine, courtesy of our friends over at kosherwine.com where you could get this and that's just the beginning. They've got tons of other wines, you know, you name it, it's there. And of course they've got cognac and uh, you know, all sorts of other uh, things like that delivered right to your door. The same with Cold Foods, delivered right to your door. I've, I've told you enough. You've, uh, you've, you've seen it. I can't wait to eat this. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to dish up another plate and uh, pour a little bit of wine for my wife. And uh, well, <laughs> I don't have a watch on, but I think she should be home any minute now. And uh, I'm going to get going. So, Lakayam, until next time, happy eating. <laughs>